episode of Heart to Heart Podcast is sponsored by Balm and Bingham Photography. If you want timeless, natural, and authentic wedding photos, visit www.balmandbingham.com. Pastor Sumbo, thank you for joining. Uh, thank you for taking the time to uh, come on Heart to Heart Podcast. Welcome. How are you? I'm doing well. It's my pleasure. Thank you for having me here. I'm excited about this. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Um, now, you and your husband, um, you and your husband are pa pastors in yes. the Liberty Christian Worship Center. Yes. And that's located in New York? Syracuse, New York. Syracuse, New York. Um, can you take us a little bit back uh, to your childhood? Because um, now we know you, we know you as Pastor Sumo, <laughs> uh, but we want to know a little bit about your childhood. Um, how was life like growing up back in Nigeria, in particular in the city that you grew up in? Thank you. Thank you for that question. Uh, going back. Well, um, I had a very humble childhood. You know, I'm, a, I'm the last child of a family of six children. So, um, so I'm the baby of the house, um, but I did not really have the pampered life, you know, of our last born, I guess, probably because of our fam family dynamic. Um, like I said before, I had a, a humble background. Um, so growing up was kind of like a busy, a little hard um, in the sense that I wouldn't have it all, right? And um, my mom, had to go through a lot, you know, she had to dedicate a whole lot to making sure that we have to eat, that we have enough to go to school for one thing that she uh, did. And my dad as well. Um, I did uh, refer so much to my mom because my dad had a little issue, you know, at an early stage in life. And so that affected things for him, but he was uh, the sweetest dad ever. So if I refer more to my mom, because she had to step in to really help us with one thing she really left us with or she gave to us is the legacy of hard work and also um, education. Getting our education was key. So, you know, I had a kind of childhood whereby uh, coming back from school, uh, you know, I had to go to where my mom sells. She was a petty trader where she sells her things and uh, we go there. We change our uniform there, you know, kind of then go around hawking. If you're, if anyone uh, knows what that is, you know, going around, you know, selling, you know, the petty trade things. We were part of that life. Um, and that's, that is part of who I am today. That's helped in building the person that I am today. So um, I grew up in the city of Lagos. It's the, like the busiest city in Nigeria. Um, it used to be the capital at, at some point, but it got moved to Abuja, Nigeria. So, but very congested, a lot going on. Um, you know, back in those days, the, the, we did not have all the luxury of what kids of today have. I don't know if I call it luxury because sometimes I think it's a kind of a disadvantage in that, you know, they have everything you know, and they, do, they don't understand. They don't understand what it takes to put effort into things. You know, things are already built there for them. They have all these video games taking all their time, taking all their minds. But I grew up as a very hardworking little child and I had to be dedicated. I had no choice. <laughs> wow. What an, an amazing background. So you came from a family of six children. Um, your mom had to step up to the plate to kind of hold the family together. Um, yes. I didn't know that you grew up in, um, in Lagos. I thought you actually grew up somewhere outside of Lagos. So that's, that's interesting. Good to know. Yes, I did. Yeah. <laughs> As a matter um, of fact, before, even ever before I left Nigeria, well, I traveled to a few cities in Nigeria, but very few. My, all, all my whole life, all my life was basically in Lagos. <laughs> Oh wow. I yeah. would wanna I would wanna visit Lagos one day. <laughs> it's a it's a good place to visit. It's a lot going on. I bet. 
Well, thank you for sharing your background. Um, I'm really interested to know how did you become a pastor's wife? Wow. Well, that just got thrown at me. Let me put it that way. Wow. I was not, I was not, I was not planning for it. I mean, I never like growing up. So I'm, I'm a kind of person. I mean, I wasn't really picky, choosy, you know, I've heard, uh, statements like, oh no, I don't want to be a pastor's wife. Oh, I don't want to. I wasn't like that. I was, I was kind of a person where just the will of God is sufficient for me is what I want, you know, in marriage. And, and I became a pastor's wife, you know, as a result of, okay, you know, be married. So your husband <laughs> to, was... But I was not, but when we got married, I was not married to a pastor. So, okay. so it was that it became, I became a pastor's wife after you know the fact but um but when i met my husband my husband had um uh, i knew he was a minister right i mean he ministered it, it was more of itinerary ministry more like uh, uh what i'll call apostolic yeah my my husband is um an ordained apostle now but he, i mean then it would I, it was more of itinerary ministry and he sang a lot so but the singing was more prominent at that point so i was thinking more in that line not just that i knew he was an um an itinerary minister where uh sometimes he's you know invited you know to come minister and he minister is a psalmist as well he ministered in music while he did that that's awesome. so i knew that part of him but I did not know that we were, you know, we were going to pastor a church at a point. Not that it crossed my mind or like, so it was just more of, okay, me ad admitting that um, role as the supportive wife that I'll be to him for the purpose of God, you know, upon his life or the call of God upon his life. So, so you know, that's how, but, you know, after we got married and the call came that, okay, it was time to start church it it wasn't it it wasn't anything for me i, I, I really i embraced it i, I mean know. i didn't know everything that was involved in it but. yeah because i know that's that's a huge calling and mm -hmm. i'm sure getting into it you realize oh wait a minute now i'm a pastor's wife i have all these responsibilities i have to take care of all these people um, yeah. but that's that's an amazing story um, speaking of you being, you know, becoming a pastor's wife, you know, you heard the calling from the Lord and you've accepted, you know, you embraced it. Um, yes. What are, do pastor's wives, um, is there some task um, attached to being a pastor's wife? Or what would you say, um, what is your primary role? in okay. you know, being a pastor's wife, supporting the vision that God has given your husband? Mm. Well, I think my biggest role is just that word support. You know, I will put it this way, support in capital letters. <laughs> wow. Because so many things come with it. I, I honestly mm. cannot delve into everything, but um, I, I mean, what I mean is we can't, we don't have all the time on this show <laughs> to do that. But um, one big thing is, um, it, you know, so being a pastor's wife or us have, or pastoring a church is not just about, okay, the people. We talk about logistics. We talk about everything that it entails. You understand? I mean, up to the simplest thing or maybe the seemingly little thing like, okay, the bills, you know, for, you know, for the building of the church but my major role in my you know in our ministry is administration mm -hmm. i i so you know when i was talking the other time about my what my childhood building me to be who i am to today you know i i find out that god has created me to be a person where you know i can put things together uh, you know organize and things like that so my major role is administration. I do have someone now that works really well in that role. That is, um, that is, that is, that is helpful. Let me put it that way, in that role. But my major role is, you know, administration. 
I do teach, you know, sometimes mainly when my husband is not around or sometimes when he's around, very rarely. Uh, but he, you know, that's, he does that majorly, but I put things together. Oh, wow. Let me put it that way. <laughs> that's awesome. So, and that's, that's okay. from a church perspective, right? Yeah. That's in the church. You are more in the administrative uh, aspect of things. And yeah. he's more into the teaching, the building, um, you know, building the people. And I love the fact that you actually brought in the, the aspect of logistics, what goes behind the scenes. You know, but sometimes we come into a church, we don't really know, you know, what happens behind the scenes. So um, have you had any, you know, how about dealing with um, people's, uh, you know, attitude or, you know, how, how have you been able to manage just dealing with people in general? Because we all different. We all bring in different things. How were you able to manage all that? Yes. So this particular so this particular aspect has been a work in progress because mm -hmm. we've been pastors for 12 years now and we've been pastoring a church for 12 years and it mm -hmm. has been uh, from one stage to another. Um, it's, a, been a, it's been a journey where um, I have learned so much. <laughs> I have learned so much. I have learned to, um, to adjust. I've learned to... Because so when we when you're dealing with human beings and especially as pastors, it's it's different on that level mm -hmm. because is a pastor is supposed to be caring, it's supposed to be an issue, but a pastor is someone that okay, the member church member will call, you know, if there are issues and things like that. And you have to have a big heart, mm -hmm. right? So so that aspect, um it, there's been quite a bit of a bit of challenges, but it has also been very rewarding. One big way, I, and I'll talk, I'll give examples of both of them. Mm. It's rewarding in the sense that when you have people around you who you who have some issues or another, and you see them feel better, it's just it, or get better, you know, or maybe healed of a sickness, maybe. Mm -hmm. a situation changing around for the better there is just this huge feeling and that, that is what what we are so big on we're so big on helping you know people get transformed you understand you know people fulfilling their purpose people discovering and working in that particular light you know um so that is the aspect of you know um you know what what I will call fulfillment mm -hmm. in this journey. Now, then the other aspect is also the aspect of it being challenging is, you know, in the course of meeting with people, you, as a shepherd, you pour your all your heart, you give it your all. And I think many times, you know, it has come back to us in ways where we realize that we feel that that heart was taken, was just broken, was just trampled, mm -hmm. was just... And I think the reason it looks that way is because you put your all in it. You yeah. put your own heart. Yeah. And maybe a, there's a kind of expectation that people will reciprocate or reciprocate or, or, or mm -hmm acknowledge that okay this person cares and honestly so let me differentiate this it's no more when i say reciprocate i don't mean like okay give back i mean acknowledge so meaning that oh i you know when we think or feel like we hold people so dear to our heart when we hold them in high place in our heart when we sincerely pray for them when we sincerely admonish when we sincerely encourage when we sincerely you know, guide. And it turns around the other way when it seems like, oh, it's not, mm -hmm. it's not received. Right. It, it's heartbreaking. <laughs> it's heartbreaking. And we've had to go over this over and over enough to learn, to learn. Now, doing it, you don't do it with any expectation. Wow. And not, at least for me, I, I 
I guess I don't do it. You know, because even the Bible tells us everything we do, do as unto God, as unto Christ. So that is, those are p- part of the lessons we learned in this race. And so many times the expectation in court here, it's not about us, right? It's not about us. It, it just goes to say that generally, I guess it's, it's the way life is in a way. Yeah. You understand. So, so now when I when I when I love when I pastor, because to pastor means to shepherd, right? You have to have the heart for it. You have to care. So when I do that, I do it as unto God, you know, and just hope that the it, it's um that it changes that and it's productive in the life of the individual. Um, learning that you probably never have to look up to people, you know, to reciprocate or to to produce what you what you're hoping <laughs> for them to produce, but to pray that they they meet that important purpose of God for their lives. Wow, so many good nuggets here. I love the fact that, first of all, you mentioned about caring for the people. Um, that's huge. You got to have the heart, you know, you got to have that. And if you don't have that heart, pray for it. <laughs> pray for that heart. Yeah. <laughs> that big, yeah. Um, and you also talked about, um, you know, you pouring into the people and not really receiving, you know, the same thing, right? Or the acknowledgement, like you said. And, um, but you have, you had to learn throughout, you know, you had to learn. So do you feel, you, do you still feel fulfilled, right? Even if you don't see things to uh, end up the way you see it, you know, let's just say that if, you know, someone was coming to your church and let's say they left, you know, you know, they've been working in the ministry, but they decided to leave. Do you still feel fulfilled, you know? Even after that, oh, yes, yes. Well, let me say, going back to first two, three years, I would have seen it differently. Like, oh wow, this, oh my god, like, oh, okay, maybe this is maybe this was not, maybe this was not, maybe this does not did not yield anything. But now, no, I don't, I don't feel that way anymore. I actually still feel fulfilled, you know. Now, if I for in you or in anyone and even that if that person leaves two things if i see that in your continuation in life you, you are making progress you are doing better i'm even happier the reason is because you, there is a seed that has been sown that means it, it has germinated and it is producing fruits so that that's one god forbid that it's the other way I may feel, oh, God, help this person. Do you understand? But personally, for me, I still feel, feel, feel fulfilled because in many times what happens is, again, talking about shifting your focus, mm. do you know, shifting your focus from the man to onto God. That's right. So, so if I what if I have done my part, if I have done my work. Mm. I feel fulfilled. You know, what brings that fulfillment to me is that I'm still in the will of God, is that I'm still doing what God has called me to do. Because that one person may have left, but there are thousands of people out there that God is probably still, you know, that probably still has for me to come into my life, you know, to pour into and offer us to work together. So, yes. Um, it, I mean, okay. yes. And talking about the aspect of people leaving the ministry, yeah, there are people that will leave the ministry that, you know, that has left the ministry that has, um, you know, that we have felt. But honestly, with time, that is changing. That is changing. Um, because, again, it's about focusing on Christ, yeah. you know, the, the author. It is his church, and the church is the body of Christ. Mm-hmm. Um, one thing that is important as well for me is the way you live is important. If for anyone living, you know, if, you know, I, I wouldn't 
hope that someone will just leave without leaving a word of okay i want to leave okay because but if it but it's happened as well that has also happened that people have some people have left even without saying a word you don't know and they just leave and you reach out yet you can't and, and i'll give an example of one that happened just recently um, it, 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 it has been a sweet journey and all of a sudden you know the, the person stopped coming and you know i would normally reach out which is which is part of what i do in the ministry mm -hmm. even to reach out i would reach out and so i was not hearing back and that bothered me a little that oh i hope nothing so i left the person for a while and after a while i reached out again and the person responded and said oh they've just been really busy and i was like oh wow okay i prayed for her and and then I left and I left it at that. But that made me feel better that, okay, at least, even if that's not the reason, but at least, you know, that little response did something. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. So um, do you have a process in your church when someone decides to leave and they actually come and tell you, um, you know, we, you know, this is the reasons why we're leaving. Do you have a process and do you, have you had a time where someone has given you the feedback and you've taken the feedback and changed things in your, you know, in your church, in your ministry? Oh, yes, definitely. Um, I can talk of a particular um, example of the person who came and, you know, you know, gave the reasons. And so we talked about it, tried to, you know, work it, and, we did put it into consideration. You understand what I mean? Though in that particular situation, it, it happened that the way the person saw it, you know, was not actually the way it was going on. So we tried, you know, to shed the light into it, you know, and um, some, and you know, sometimes you get results that way. Sometimes not. It depends in that case or the person, you know, still left. Mm. Do you understand? Mm. But yes, definitely we. And also really, let me put it this way. For the people that have left, I mean, sometimes, you know, we have situations of offense come up. Mm. You know, I don't think that can be taken out anywhere. The re I think, And I think the, the reason is because as human beings, we're the body of Christ, right? It's right and we are the church and no one is perfect you understand but we try to put a process in place mm. or yeah in place let me put it that way in the church to establish love for you know open door it's an open door policy please if you feel anything is going on that you do not please come like come come straight to us you know you, you can go up the channel, talk to your unit leader, you know, if it doesn't get resolved that way, feel free to come to us because, you know, we'll take time to look into it to resolve it. Mm -hmm. Not many of that has happened really, uh, but it's yeah. part of the process. It's part of the process, yeah. That's very good, I like that answer. Um, so how do you balance multiple roles? As a, as a wife, a pastor yourself, a pastor's wife, a mother, um, you know, and all the responsibilities that you have in your church, how do you find the time to, you know, balance everything? And have you had any challenges with balancing it all? And how did you overcome them? Grace. Oh. Uh <laughs> <laughs> the, big the, one. <laughs> <laughs> the answer right. is grace um That's so right. yes it, it's basically the grace of god but you know um i'm not gonna just say okay grace and not shed light into it because 
um, yes, sometimes it can be it can be challenging because we only have twenty four hours in a day, and you know, to and sometimes it's it's even more than that. You know, I'm a I'm a sister, I'm a child, <laughs> I'm a daughter to somebody, right. <laughs> I'm a friend to some <laughs> to people. <laughs> so we find out that you know those are also chime in, you know, yeah. from time to time. But the biggest thing that I know that I do is. Um, well, I stay connected to God. I pray for the help of God, number one. I have to con constantly pray. One thing that is big that, that for me that I do is, okay, going to God and asking for his help, being in his will. And this is very, very important now yeah. because uh, if I'm not at peace, if I'm not at rest, I cannot do so many. So the peace of God, you know, the peace of God is just so, so important. And many times on when you know you are at peace with God, that God is ha help, happy with you, God is helping you, you have the confidence to go about your day, to go up, to go, you know, doing things. So for me, it has been the grace of God that helps me. And I make sure, I pray, I try hard to stay connected to the help and get the help of the holy spirit the help of the holy spirit because <clears throat> it's not about me getting out a journal say okay i organize my day this way this way because so many things can also come in and just may may, may come in to destabilize that so many times i commit it, commit it into his hands that god help me yeah god help me to take care or take, take help me with this schedule before me and there have been times where i have to uh, some things will take pride you know i'll prioritize some things in a season in my life mm. you know than the other role because if i feel that that is where the need is at this time wow that's awesome so you pray about it you ask for the help of the holy spirit Yes. Um, yeah. So we, you talked about praying about it and asking for the help of the Holy Spirit to be able to balance everything, family, ministry, uh, business, you're a businesswoman, um, um, just, you know, balance it all because you are a daughter to someone, <laughs> you are a sister, a friend to someone, and you also need to, you know, fill in those areas um so what are some of the challenges have you encountered some challenges uh, maybe before praying about it to god you, you know you've encountered what are some of those challenges and how did you overcome them yes um there um, i still feel challenges even up to today you know that role you know being in that role sometimes some of the challenges is just okay feeling dr drawn Mm. All, you know from all over mm. you know um having that time to rest and it, it's funny it's funny that i'm saying this because many times when we're not fully rested we're not settled That's we true. don't have we don't feel like i personally don't feel like i have the capacity to just okay handle so many things i i don't for some reason i don't like to just do one thing at a time. I'm I'm a more I'm a multitasking person. So I like things going on. I don't like my life being boring. <laughs> I like things going on. But the challenge is sometimes now trying okay being able to wind down. Like mm. okay, I need some to gather more uh, some strength to go to the next level. And also doing um, so many things at the same time sometimes just makes you not see, you know, the the depth yeah. of some key areas. So not until you start noticing some things, oh, great, okay, I don't like this coming out of this particular one, so let me pay more attention to that. Mm -hmm. But it also all comes back to Holy Spirit, please help me. Because many times what I've also noticed is, in the course of you going about your day, doing your things, when you are committed it personally, I, the Holy Spirit just, you know, you know, speaks to my heart and it calls my attention to something. And 
I will get it there. So I'm walking. So I'm walking. I'm not walking alone. That's the Holy right. Spirit is working with me, helping me. But the biggest challenge is the time to 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 do everything at once. So many times I prioritize now. Yeah. Okay, what is most important right now for this season? I may put more time to that. And one big thing that I do, I know you probably haven't asked that. Okay. Oh, yeah, I think you did, actually, how, how I overcome that. Yes. I sieve out, I sieve out distractions. I do not, so I, I, I naturally don't like distractions as a person. It's not my personality to stay in drama and things like that. Yeah. So even with attaining these roles as uh, even made it more important to me. Anything not productive, I, I have to cut it off. I don't have time for it. So cutting off distractions. And sometimes, you know, as part of life, it may, something may be growing around you that may seem not natural and normal, but with the help of the Holy Spirit, when God opens our eyes to it, it has happened to me. I will say, oh, hey, this is not what I need to focus on. Okay, God help me. It may even be as little as, oh, you know, letting go of something that might probably have meant that might have been a big deal. Like the Holy Spirit just speaking to your heart. Okay, th that's fine. Just let it go. You cannot handle that right now. You know. Absolutely. So taking out the distractions is a way, big way to come out of it, and big time committing your ways into the hands of God. You know the Bible says, mm -hmm. "Commit your ways into the hands of God, and He will direct your heart." Absolutely. It's the biggest. It's that that has been my, been my biggest strength in this journey. Wow. Sorry, I, mean, I think I said so much. No, that's, that's very good. That's very good. Um, um, you mentioned about you mentioned about. I like the fact that you mentioned the the spiritual aspect and also the physical aspect. Um, because I feel like with the physical aspect, the way I see it, it's a partnership, right? We yes. partner with God, and we have a responsibility to to fulfill. God also has His responsibility. Mm -hmm. And then you taking that step of saying, you know what, I need to rest my body, you know, mm -hmm. I need to rest because I know if I don't, you know, I won't be able to carry on. Right. And also be able to say, you know what, recognizing a distraction and say, you know what, I'm going to cut this off intentionally so that mm -hmm. I can focus on the things that God has called me um, and also praying and, you know, asking for the help of the Holy Spirit. I like the fact that you touched on both, um, spiritual and physical uh, aspects so that was good <laughs> thank you i know you you're very big on encouraging encouraging people to live a godly life um what does living a godly life mean to you um and how do you encourage others to live this way thank you very much for that question it's um i think because it's the fundamental you know, to live in a fulfilling life, mm -hmm. a fulfilled life, to live in your purpose in life and to make sure that you're in alignment, you know, with what God has planned out for you. Um, and one big element of it is obedience, mm -hmm. obedience to God. Um, the importance of it is well, the first one that I said, how to do it is the second point that I made, which is obedience. Um, living a godly life. Mm. The Bible says that if the foundation be faulty, what can the righteous do? That's because right. this is what you build on. Mm -hmm. This is what is you. This is what will reflect in every aspect of your life. Mm. So for me, um, I believe that when whatever God wants me to do, I want to. I want to, to be that person that makes God happy, that gladdens the heart of God. Because I know that it once I make the heart of God, if the heart of God is glad towards me, yeah. everything that I lay my hands on will prosper. Yes, because He's the only one that can help me. It is not about my qualification. It is not about the skill that I have. It is not about what I know how to do. Mm -hmm. If the blessing of 
God is not upon it, it cannot. It, the Bible says that, that the blessing of God make it rich and adds no sorrow. That's right. Um, I, I guess I'm just that kind of person where I, I, I love, I love the heart. I love the heart of God to be sweet towards me, <laughs> to be glad towards me. And let's face it. There's nothing we can achieve in this world, you know, by trying to achieve, by trying to uh, do it otherwise or do it the wrong way. Yeah, people, someone can build, someone can build for many years, not truthfully, not in a godly way, but do you know the end of it? It, it cannot, it will not stand. It will, it, it will be like a house built on a very weak foundation but when you have a strong foundation if you the structure you build on it stays it lasts long you know it's durable mm -hmm. so that's why you know the you know uh, living a godly life anybody that i have that comes my way that i counsel that i talk to that i pour into I make sure that is a very, very important aspect that as a principle that you walk by because that is the only sure foundation. I love, I love that piece uh, that uh, you, brought, you brought up the word obedience, you know, and I feel like a lot of times, and, and that goes along with um, our purpose, you know, our destiny, you know, you know, you we got to be able to be obedient, you know, and it, like you said, it's not about us. It's not about, it's about God. It's about the purpose that he has for you. And what you brought up is, is one of the key, one of the key things that, you know, as Christians, we need to do to be obedient, you know, even if we don't like it, even if we don't, you know, we don't like the, it doesn't even matter. We just have to be obedient to what God, in, in order for us to fulfill that purpose that God has given us. So, Amen. and you know, talking about the obedience, I know I didn't ex elaborate on that. Talking about the obedience, and I love what you said um, that it may not make sense. We may not even understand. The reason is because God understands better than us. And if He gives us an instruction, and you know that person that God wants to bless. That it what or what that person that God wants to commit something important and something big and something glorious into his hands, he wants that person that he can tell, go oh, do this, that will do it. So, so God will test you first with the seemingly little things. He wants to know how faithful you are. So that's why it starts with obedience to God. If you obey Him, He. he it's like a record that is marking, okay, okay, I give him this. Mm, okay, he's faithful in this little thing. Okay, I'm going to, you know, commit a little more. And he's faithful. Oh, now I commit something so big into the hand of that person. So it's very, very, it's very, very important. Very important. Yeah. Thank you. you made a good point. Uh, because if you don't love God, if you don't obey God and you say you love him, yeah. And that's why in, in this day and age, there's so much going on that you wonder sometimes yeah. how even someone who may really raise their voice, God, I love you, Lord, and I give my voice to honor you, to worship you, all that. Right. But <laughs> in, if even, really even speaking in tongues, even speaking in tongues. Yes. That's right. And, and the little thing, God is asking you to do this, and you can do it, and or 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 the your fruit. By their fruit, you we shall know you shall know them. What fruit are we producing as human beings? As a child of God, what is what what fruit are you producing? If we do things like those in the world, how does it differentiate us? Then it means we are not living a godly life. And I know, I know the the the, the I know the aspect of grace. I know the aspect of the righteousness of Christ. Yes, it is not by our righteousness. It, it is not, I'm not 
I'm not saying here that, oh, no, you, it has to be by your will, but because by your power. No, it is not by your power. That's why we have to submit to yeah. God. And this is what I teach or I admonish people around me or that I'm in their lives to do. It is not about your power, you doing it in your power. It is about you submitting to God. Mm -hmm. Because when you submit to him, his righteousness, his righteousness we know is what has brought the salvation unto us. That, it has, that is what has given us. And grace has covered us. But also the word of God says that, shall I will continue in sin and expect grace to abound. So mm -hmm. we have to get it right in this. I, I, think, I think I'm being very passionate already now. I love we have it. to get yeah. it right. Absolutely. Uh, I'm... We're going to get it right in these aspects of our lives that um, we, we have to have the fear of God. We have to have the fear of God. And the word the Bible, the Bible also says that the fear of God is the gain of wisdom. I mean, it's a no-brainer. Very good. Very, very good. So I want to go back to when you said, you know, being faithful in small things and God will open up doors for bigger things because he yeah. sees that you were faithful with the little things. Um, have you experienced that? throughout your journey? Oh, yes. Or so give us an example mm. how. Yes, yes, I will. Um, you know, right now, the sanctuary that we're worshiping, um, we got the sanctuary in 2020, so two years, going three years, um, going three years now. Mm. Um, when God was to provide this for us, you know, this journey has been a, a walk of faith, a walk of faith, and you know, there have been times, you know, at the beginning of the ministry, you know, where all, my husband and I, were, we were sold out, you know. Mm -hmm. I'm not ashamed to share this story here. We're sold out. There have been times that we put all our personal, or at a point, you know, like, you know, it seems like, okay, once money comes into the family, there's no difference. The only way, the only money that doesn't cross over is, money doesn't cross over from the ministry into the personal. But when it comes to personal, there is no personal. It's all good. That's right. Let me put it that way. And yeah. I'm just going to leave it that way. And and we kept going. It had been a walk, in, walk of faith. But when God was to get us this building, we could tell that this is the miraculous work of God. Is it the amount? Is it the, the treasure that came with it? The, it, it was a huge blessing. And what I saw was, oh God, this is just the work of your hands. This is this is just you. And it has been that way in the ministry, how God has, has been with us, even when it seems mm -hmm. like this, even when it seems like there's a huge challenge in front of us, God shows up. I've never, oh, we have never experienced a time where we feel his absence. Mm -hmm. God will show up so miraculously that we know. And now it has even become so normal that mm -hmm. when when challenges come, we know already God will do it, no matter how big. And, you know, the, the, the funny thing is, you know how the Bible says precepts upon, upon precepts. Yeah. So it, even after this, then it will be a, a higher one. Then it will be a higher one. The higher challenge comes and God comes through again. It's just so obvious and um, amazing. Wow. It, it's, it's an amazing journey. It's a journey that I love. It's, it's a journey that has, that has had so many challenges. There have been times as pastors that we have cried, you know, we have mm -hmm. shed tears. But in all, God has been so faithful. God has proven to us that I am with you. Yeah. And he has, not just by words, but in actions, and in actions. ways that yeah. he has done so much for us. So good, so good. Um, I love when you said that there's there's not a, a day that you did not see God come through or, you know, help you. And it's it, that, that was good. Um, now, I meant to ask you this question. Uh, <laughs> Should people pay for prayers? 
And is this biblical? Pay for prayers. Yeah. No. Mm. People should not pay for prayers. And you know what I mean, right? Biblical. When I, you, know, you know, I can expand if you want to. You, yes. Yeah. Um, you know, like you go to a church and a pastor wants to pray for you, but before they do so, before they lay their hands on you, um, mm. they give they hand you an envelope, and <laughs> to put you know that sometimes they even tell you the exact amount. What's you know what's to put in there, uh, in order mm. for them to pray for you. Is that biblical? Mm. No, it's not biblical, and um, I have not come across any place like that in the Bible where. You know, we talk about the apostles, you know, where Jesus did that because it is the example that we are to emulate. No, not at all. Now, if you pray for someone and something happens and they want to bless you, it's of their own will. Hmm. That's fine. You know, if they come, you're not the one asking, okay. Um, I need you oh, to give me this, you know. Oh, 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 God has done this in your life. Oh, we pray together and God did it. Oh, are you going to appreciate God? Are you going to give to Him? <laughs> no. But if it comes that the person wants to appreciate, that's fine. But it's not biblical. No. Wow. I'm, I'm glad you answered that. <laughs> um, that's. Um... And is there a Bible reference that you know that particularly, or, you know, does the Bible has a reference? I'm, I'm thinking of the book of Acts, uh, but I don't know yes. exactly which chapter, but um, that's. In the case of the case Peter, the case yeah. of Peter, where I can't remember the name of the, um, yeah. is it by Jesus? I can't remember now. Yes, where he wanted, when he came, to him and say oh i'll right. give you money right you know like let me have this right. kind of power <laughs> it's like that i mean that's similar it's not exactly what and i guess it's so obvious obvious if we cannot yeah. pinpoint anything if we cannot pinpoint anything in the bible that says oh you know i mean okay jesus at this point did it did this paul at this yeah. point did this you know it's it's just obvious and even even um, for lack of a better word, even mm. morally, that doesn't right. fit right. And morally, I like right. that. Right. So it's like, it's like, it, so it's not a work of the ministry. It's not you ministering unto them. It's you selling, you know, selling whatever they want that prayer for deliverance, yeah. for miracle. It's you selling yeah. that miracle. It's you telling them, okay, come right. buy. No, no. It freely as God given it, given it unto us. He said, he said we should go, we should make disciples of, of nations, right? Yeah, if we should go there, we should go out, we should encourage, right? We should, he said, cast out demons, you know, set the people free. No, it did not That's say right. go and That's sell right. it to them. Right. So Very it's not good. biblical. Very good. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you, Pastor. Um, You're welcome. How do you define a purpose for life? And how can we align ourselves with God's plan for us? Hmm. So purpose for life, purpose for life, I, to me, is being where God wants you to be, doing what God wants you to do. Um, you know, so I'm trying to not use the word purpose to, to mm -hmm. find purpose. <laughs> so being in the will of God. Amen. And how to discover your purpose. One thing, you know, for you to know and discover your purpose in life, one thing you have to pray to God to mm. reveal it to you. If you don't know it, if he has not revealed it to you yet. But one thing that I have noticed, I'm not going to say, okay, yes, 100%. The re but what that I've seen it as a trend is whatever will be your purpose, God has put a seed mm. of it in you. What you do effortlessly, what you do without 
hustles, what you do that you you love doing, it's naturally mm. you has something to do with your purpose most of the time. Um, for example, I will go back to you know my aspect or my role mm. in the ministry. Personally, I'm an I'm an administrator. I love and this has this has been me even before I became a mm. pastor's wife. Um, it, I love business. I love I love you know putting things together. If I have if there's an idea, I can think of okay, how do we? If there's an event coming up, okay, what are the things that need to be in place? What are the things that we need for this? Yeah. To you get what I mean? How do we? What is that thing in your life that you know is you so much? God has put it there for a reason, for a purpose. So pray to God, God, and it's simple. It can be as simple as God. What do you want me to do? What is your purpose for me? You might not hear that outright, you know, voice of God telling you, but one way or another, he will point it to you. Amen. And it can be through any means. So praying to God, being open-minded, and you know, also being uh, and also watch for those things that you do effortlessly that you enjoy doing. That is part yeah. of you. That's very good. That's very yeah. good. And I, I feel like once you in your purpose, then you you know you, you feel that sense of fulfillment. You know. Um, because you aligning yourself with the purpose that God has for your life. Um, you may, you probably already answered this, but what would you tell someone right now um, who is struggling, um, struggling finding their purpose? Amen. Amen. Go to God. Just, it's as simple as oh God, I surrender. One, be open-minded. I think the first thing is be open-minded because, you know, sometimes we we tend to deceive ourselves. For lack of a better word, word, for lack of a better word, we tend to say, oh, God, okay, I surrender. But we know we're still holding back. We're still holding on to things. If you, if you can say, God, let your will, not mine, let your will be done in my life. Amen. Because many times, part of the, part of the reasons that it seems like we, it's difficult for us to discover what our purpose is, is because there are some things that we actually want, and God might have been speaking some things in your house. God might God might have been dealing with you about something that you are not releasing yet. So search yourself very well and say, God, your will, not mine, be done. Be open-minded and ask God, God, I want to, I want your purpose for my life. Please show it to me. He will reveal it to you. It could be in a dream. It could be in someone just saying something to you and it just clicks like that, that, oh, wait a minute. You, but eventually you will remember that you have prayed about it. Very yeah. good. Very good. Well, my last question. <laughs> <laughs> tell us about Liberty Christian Worship Center. Tell us about your church and um, how can people find it? Or are you working on any other projects, sure. you know, related to your church? Sure. Yes. Um, the name of the church is Liberty Christian Worship Center. It's located in Syracuse, New York, precisely 3027 James Street, Syracuse, um, New York. What uh, the zip code is one three two zero six. Um, it's a place where we talk, we teach about you know our key words is uh, wisdom, purpose, and worship. Worship, wisdom, purpose. Worship is big because that is what we are created to do. You know, we we it's so big because when we worship God, you know, it takes us to where He is. When we praise Him, you know, His presence. Also, and that it makes the every difference. It makes the whole difference where the presence of God is. There is liberty. So worship, wisdom, wisdom is important to the, to live this life because um, 
when we leave us and uh, again the bible also says that the fear of god is the beginning of wisdom so that is part of the things that we teach amen so wisdom and then purpose and that is when you can actually live your purpose in life amen um you're you're welcome if you're looking for a home church you're welcome we love we love people we love worshiping god we love keeping the mm-hmm. atmosphere atmosphere pure you know for the spirit of god to move and there has been humongous testimonies even even from people that have left you know their testimonies have always been when they're around you know they know very well okay. Very good. Very well. Uh, I need to come and visit one of these days. Um, Yes. Yeah, absolutely. (laughs) Um, Pastor Sumbo, I want to thank you for your time, for answering to this invitation. Um, It was really a pleasure speaking with you. Uh, Really, really, you gave us some really good information, some really great nuggets that we can use in our personal lives. So I want to thank you so much. And I do want to, I want you to come back. <laughs> I want you to come back because I feel Definitely. like there's more that we can, you know, talk about and and really dig into, you know, just to help people um, be live their best lives, you know, and really uh, work, uh, walk in the purpose that God has called them to. So I want to say thank you uh, and have a great day. Amen. Thank you very much for having me on this show. I appreciate you so much. Out of your very busy life, you know, taking this time out to do this, I respect you so much and I pray increase in your life on all sides in Jesus' name. Thank you for doing this. Thank you for doing this for the people and thanks for having me. My great family. You're welcome. (laughs)